back. My name is Sue and I'm from OML Embroidery and today we're gonna start off with the quilt chat. Oh yeah by the way over at the computer is Dawn for now. Um, Hello. Yay. Hello. <laughs> Told my daughter today Hello. I can't Hello. talk now meeting with my gang. That's <laughs> awesome. Robin good morning. Uh, awesome. Misha, hello. Good morning to everyone. We're going to start off with our quilt chat. And this is what I did for Don. These are all his test squares. This one was released. The gnome girl. She's pretty tough looking. Her, her eyes are slightly different in the final. <laughs> yeah, I, got, I looked at it and I said, well, she looks like a zombie. You got to do better than that. So we made her eyes a little bit better. So, yeah. But I sewed them all together and it looks fantastic. The Hello. other the other release was this one. My heart beats for you. It's nice and big, as you can see. But look at that mylar. Look at that mylar glow. Awesome. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is make a wall hanging for him. And just keep putting the blocks together. And it's a... They're so beautiful. Uh, I just thought it was a great idea. So that's an ongoing project. Now, I'm still dead inside, but caffeinated. I need to put that somewhere where, like, on me. Um, this is the other release today. Love the new de design, says Robin. Yay! This is the other release, and they're called Big Big Crazy Clamshells. So... Um, the big, big part is that they're the size of the hoop. So we're stitching out one huge clamshell. So this fits in the eight by eight hoop. And I left this one like this because we're going to do a stitch along. You add in, you stitch one, and then you put this around it and you stitch the satin stitches. So it is all attached in the hoop. That's cool. Yeah, uh, you saw me do one, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, and it's really neat, and it turns out up here I had to do a little tweaking, uh, but down here it turns out perfect. So with big clamshells, I had to do some quilting designs along with the crazy quilting, because who doesn't love crazy quilting, right? Crazy quilt's awesome. Yeah, and this one... I did without the crazy quilt stitches and I did it all in browns and this one I did in green so all the fabrics match it's from a layer cake and whatnot but it's a technique I think you guys should try especially if you don't like sewing and sewing blocks together just do it in the hoop so um it's like the quilt as you go method says Karina yeah absolutely it is um, but just on the embroidery machine. So you would stitch out the next block and before the satin stitches and there's tack down stitches, put this over it on the hoop. So this isn't hooped. Um, then um, position it, which is easy to do. It only kind of fits one way right here and tape it down and it's going to do a zigzag that's your get out of jail free card so if it's not set up right it's easy to fix and then do the satin stitches and then just keep going and going it's really cool so you guys should try this the instructions are really good there's a lot of pictures a lot of everything so one last thing before we start i don't know if you guys are ready for this but, but wait there's more there's more um, this is what I've been working on, oh, for weeks now, and it's just about done. Now, how much of that can you get, Don? <laughs> it, <laughs> not, not enough. All right. I don't have, like, a ton stitched out, but I wanted to show you guys. Can we see the top? Yeah. Yeah the bright colors so the yellow and the green just old tradition so there's two ways of making this quilt so there's the flower um the flower blocks and then the border blocks i'm gonna call them so when you put it all together the border blocks um make this 
shape here, which is really cool. But if you look, this brings it around. See how it goes around in the top? So if this was continued, there'd be a nice circle of yellow um, around it. But if you don't want to do that, then you can just attach the blocks like this. And it's just one. Yeah, and then it still kind of goes around, not as dramatically as the, oh, I'm pointing and you can't see it, as the upper part, but, uh, you know, more than one way of doing it. And this is what the joins look like if you're just doing two flowers. Um, it still makes a really nice pattern. We're talking big time. I ironed it, and I absolutely love these wrinkles in it. Um it's amazing. It gives it that old timey look. <laughs> yes, that is ex it's not meant to be perfect. I'm going to say it straight out. It's not meant to be perfect. Um and it makes it look really hand stitched. I think you could fool someone with it. But if you look at any of the pictures of an actual old size one, old one, then um you can see it. So what size hoop? This is, I'm doing a big and a small because, let me explain to you why, because traditionally each hexagon is one inch. That's what is most often used. Um, and when you're doing hexagons, one of these little sides, that's how you measure it. So by the way, I should tell you too, this block here is done with pre-cuts and you can use a certain die. You can use your cutter machine to do it. And it's one and it's easy to do. Don said, oh, that'll take a long time. I'm like, no, are you kidding? So much fun to do. So one, one and one, and you just place it and it stitches it down. It goes really fast. Um, this one here, for example, all the rest of them are uh, done by regular applique. And I do have two different fabrics. I ran out of this green, by the way. So if you want this, this exact fabric, like the brighter one, the nicer one, this is from um, Missouri Star. Judy Cool sent it to me a long time ago and I used every little piece of it up. Um, so it's cool. And this one is called Duckling. It's Kona Solids. And this one, uh, the name is escaping me. But if anyone wants it, just ask in the OML Embroidery University Facebook group. But it's Kona Solids. And this is just a traditional look. That's all it is. So piece by piece, die cut, all done, looks gorgeous. And this one is regular applique. So Can't tell. we do one, one block at a time. So this is the first applique. And this is the next one. And I'm just putting down one piece of it and you can pre-cut basic the fabric that's easy and then the green and then the yellow so it's easy to do and just keep doing it it gets done really quickly and again it's one of those that looks super complicated but it isn't so these blocks at the top are even easier um, because only the green is appliqued which makes it even better. So I put down, you know, a whole thing of yellow and then piece it and then stitch it. So it goes really fast. So hoop sizes. Now this, the top part fits into an eight by eight. This one I used a 10 by 10 and a half by 10 and a half, but it's basically seven by nine, I think, or an eight by nine. It didn't fit into my eight by eight hoop. Um, so I used the 10 by 10 because that's all I had, but I had lots of room to um, spare <laughs> on it. But I've also made it fit 
the five by seven hoop because if you have a small hoop you can i think it would look just as good but yeah one of those super complicated it has a huge amount of wow factor i'm even happier with the wrinkled blocks believe it or not because it really does look like you know grandmother's quilt from 30 years ago so uh it's awesome all i have is a five by seven hoop good to go it'll be it'll be released in that size for you so two ways of doing it so the piece by piece on this size only so it's a one inch hexagon um and this one is regular applique um parrot that's it thank you judy quilt parrot so the green is parrot and the yellow is duckling and it's all from missouri star and it's kona solids i don't know why parrot escaped my mind so thanks judy quilt and thanks for getting me this fabric in the first place it just m inspired me to do all of this also let's talk about the flowers for just a minute traditionally all the centers are the same color i just picked a purple because that's what i had and i wanted it to stand out anything would look good the first flower is solid this is almost solid um but you can see over here look i did one in blues too so solid and then the second outline of the flower is the printed fabric so yeah that's traditional you don't have to stick with it especially if you're doing it with pre-cut you can make it scrappy looking flower you can you know go crazy on it so that is coming up i'm kind of thinking i'd like to have it for tomorrow for you guys um don keeps telling me to hurry up but i don't know i'll get there so okay moving on to today's Stuff. let me get today's stuff out i need my bag of organza and we are going to be doing this butterfly garden you guys saw that already so we did some blocks look at this one this is absolutely my favorite block ever um that dawn did it and what catches my attention is the red organza isn't that beautiful so and this is the other one which is also as stunning i picked a dark background and then some light blue kind of different colors on it i love this and he decided to do orange on the background which really makes it stand out but isn't that stunning i am certain i love this one just the reds on it isn't that oh just, I really like that one too. just by changing it's the red and the white so just by changing one set of colors it looks stunning so that's what we're going to be working on today now these blocks take i'm going to put this one on top these blocks take an hour to stitch so we're not going to do all of the stitching because i know you guys know how to stitch so that, that's a long time just an hour on the machine just way. yeah it's a lot of fun though Not but including your trimming and stuff so for my block what i've done is i've used this as the background this is going to be the middle block and i'm going to use the darker fabric around the outside that's what we're going to do today and i kicked it up a little bit and this is what I used for the flowers. Oh yeah, you can't nice. really see the sparkle, but I used Kingstar Metallic. And I had a happy little accident, which is really cool. Hopefully Dawn, you can, whoops, drop that organza. Hopefully Dawn can zoom in on one of them and see, but I did, the one of these one set of these flowers in which one can you see um right right here yep yeah you can't see that's it that's the middle it's too late it's okay. no i can see it on oh. the screen but you can't see what i'm talking about 
So anyways, I did this flower in turquoise and I didn't like it. So I went over it with the purple and in real life, it shows both colors. So it just totally added to it. It's really neat. So I just stitched this out. Now this isn't anything in particular. It is just stitching. So you get a, your placement stitch and then you put your batting down, stitch it down, trim it, fabric down, trim it, and then stitch. So it's all just plain stitching. I kicked it up a little bit with these designs, thread designs. I love it. So what we're going to do today is we are going to do the dragonfly and then the folded fabric edges just to finish off. Because like I said, I know you guys know how to stitch and change colors and we've done this before. So just follow the steps on that. Um, Judy Quilt says, I'm guessing the breaks in the pattern is where the stitching will go to cover. Yep, absolutely. There's quite a few of them here and the dragonfly is going to cover it. That's just um, a really good way of doing everything. So let's head on over to my brother Luminaire 2, who is named... Uh, Captain Jack. Captain Jack. So by the way, I should say that this design is from Anita Good Design and it is in the August 2022 All Access, which I just love this one. Okay, you move. So again, placement, batting, fabric, stitch. And now we're going to do the fun parts. So I have a nice hot pink. Judy Quilt says, hmm, half filled bobbin. Should be enough, though. Oh! <laughs> oh, bobbin police, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's about half. I'm, I'm willing to risk it today. Danger is my middle name. Not that, you know, anyone's in danger, but I hate running out of bobbins. We'll try it. Thanks, bobbin police. Appreciate it. So the first step in any applique is placement. So we know where to put everything. I've got my organza handy and I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna do. You can layer your organza and you can layer it with different colors. So this guy's cute. So there's just enough there. So I'm gonna show you guys as soon as we do our dance. So this is what it would look like with one layer. I'm gonna go for a little bit more. So two layers of it is gonna have a much stronger effect. And we could skip it all the way up to three layers. Let's do three so it stands out. You can still see through it, but it stands out. Yeah, I like that. What do you think, Don? Three? Sure. But you can also add like different colors in there. So you could do two layers of purple and one layer of white or something like that. Yeah, that'd be cool. Easily. And then you'd have the end result would be a lighter purple, but it's it's beautiful. Hopefully no chicken today. <laughs> And of course, be careful of your fingers. A little bit of tape would have been prudent, but that's okay. What? We're getting the chicken. Kinda. Now it's gonna stitch it down, and I already love how it's gonna look. And I love the pink with the purple. So it's awesome. So really stitch down well, which is fine. <coughs> And someone asked before if we could use mylar, and the answer is no. <laughs> you can't use mylar on it. So, yeah. No, there's nothing to hold down the mylar property. No, there's nothing. So let's go back to the desk and give this a quick trim. Tula pink scissors. Um, 
I like the darkness of the purple. Not quite as good as the red that you did, though, Don, but still pretty darn good. Yeah, I don't know why that red pops so much on there, but it looks amazing. Oh, colors. I like it. I like things to stand out, but it's so beautiful because you can see through and you can still see the flowers in the background, which is really cool. And that's why you stitch them out first. So they show through the back. Now I'm just trimming the organza. We do have satin stitches to cover it. It's really easy to trim. Not like mylar, but still pretty darn easy. I wouldn't, you know, try to tear it or anything like that. Um, I wouldn't think that would be a good idea. So just the usual, take your time trimming. The neater you trim all your appliques, the better it's going to look. And the shimmer on it looks amazing with a little bit of the metallic thread. Did you use any on this one, Don? No, you didn't. Uh, you... No, not on that one, no. There we go. I told Don to put a little bit of metallic thread just in certain places I just to highlight it. Yeah, that's fine. All right, back to the machine. Oh, yeah, I love that. I love it. And the next step is just designs on it, I think. Yeah, it is. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, just on the wings. I thought maybe it was a second applique. <laughs> but isn't that beautiful how you can still see through it? I love it. Yeah, it's nice with the It's a very special looking quilt. Yeah. I wanted a deep color to stand out but of course you can still see behind it so that was what four layers uh, three layers of purple so mix and match keep your scraps i wish they sold a pack of like 12 by 12 organza with two of every color i think that would i think that would be awesome and then you can make your layers but i keep all mine in a baggie so, okay, now we're going to do the satin stitches. Beautiful. I could have changed the color here, but I'm leaving it pink uh, because I think it looks great. So that part's quite easy, isn't it? Beautiful. So now the satin stitches. I wish they had these. This is the... Oh, no, they do have them bigger. Ooh, I might stitch out a really big one. I can't remember if it goes into the big, 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 big hoop. But I think that would be gorgeous framed on the wall. Just one. Yeah, yeah, just one, yeah. just one big one, as big as it goes. I might do that because I think that would be stunning. Actually, if you did, did one super big one and then did a couple of smaller ones, that would be good. Three separate frames. Yeah, you could do that I too. Think I think I'll just stick with the one big one though. It'd be pretty. So the satin stitches, of course, are going to cover up all of our edges and make it beautiful. Then all we have to stitch is the body. And then we will be ready to put on the edges. So it's not hard. It just takes a little bit of time to do. And I think this one is going to go perfectly with everything else. And, um blingy it's very blingy and i'm okay with that i like that hot pink i think this would have looked good with a lighter pink as well but that's okay dawn i like yours as it reminds me of fall colors yeah the orange yeah absolutely i know and the reds ah, make it a theme i bought large organza bags from amazon to for use of for appliques. Brilliant idea. 
No Mylar for this one. No Mylar, Judy Quilt. It would just honestly just tear away. You have to have the cover stitches for the Mylar. This set comes in as big, the big hoop size. Yes, I knew it. I was pretty sure. I knew it. Um, triple A. I am a triple A size. Hey, that's the only time that being big is good. So, that's a that's as big as you can get. Can you imagine what that would look like? So either a white or a black solid background. It's okay. Um, black. Hmm. Black with, how about this? Black with neon colors for the flowers or brights. I think, yes, it does. Uh, I, I do have it. Um, uh, exquisite, so dime threads are, uh, they came out with a summer pack and it's all fantastic bright colors, even the greens. I can get it out. Well, that made a mess. Can you go back to the desk, Don? I dropped quite a few of them, and I have a trailing thread. So these are the colors. And I dropped another one. Sorry, I thought it was easy to bring out. Look at these colors, man. This is what I'm talking about for um, brightness. Oh, I did get them off. So, flowers like this. Look at this orange that'll knock your um, socks off there. And a couple of different shades of green. And, of course, our very special lime green. And I'm, I have some of their, um, ooh, yeah, for you, Lynn. Oh, and this one is even brighter. Isn't that a great set, though? Any of these ones on a black fabric? Can I have that? No. 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 <laughs> Can I have that? Wow. It's a nice set. It is a nice set. I like it. I like oh, it. Share? No. Right. no, no share. I gave you Tula Pink scissors. Deal with it. Deal with it. This is, um, while we're at the desk here, this is how I keep all my organza together. I just put it in a Ziploc bag. It just kind of keeps it together. It's easy. All right, back to the machine. OML Chatters, where do you purchase organza? I could actually, back to the desk, yeah. I could actually get mine in a quilt store. Um, but you have to buy, you know, and it's not cheap here, I guess that's what I'm saying. So I just buy, you know, like half a yard of it and put it all together and there we go, it's, it's easy. And Dilbeck says we can never have enough embroidery threads. Yet, no kidding. No kidding. I actually shared some of my threads with Dawn. Not the exquisite ones. The ones I don't use. Use. Use, don't use. So, he has some brighter colors for when he's done his day job. So, there we go. Dragonfly Garden is what this is called. And this is the 8x8 eight eight size, so it is A. A. Exquisite Summer. Summer? Yeah, Exquisite Thanks. Summer, the bright ones. Um, and it's from Dime, of course. So, yeah. Just gorgeous colors. Ah, oh, we're almost done. Getting towards done, the satin stitches. So, yeah. Good morning from New York City. <laughs> How beautiful are these colors? No, I mean what th 
set of thread. Love the partnership Dime and OML has. So this week on Dime, they are going to be revealing a new, a new thing. Um, yeah, a new embroidery thing. I have no idea what it's going to be, but I'm really excited about it. Yes, on the 25th, I'm going to be on Dime talking to Eileen Roche, which is like the coolest thing ever, representing the OML Embroidery Gang. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. She's she's so easygoing. She loves it. Yep, she loves it. Yep, she loves it. She thinks it's great that we have such a great group. She mentions us every show. Are you going to get the upgrade for Captain Jack? No, <laughs> not for a while. Probably closer towards the end of the year, if that. As soon as I can afford it, I'll get it. Here in Canada, it is $1,050 plus tax for it. Um, not including anything else, just the box of it. The ten and a half or the ten by ten magnetic hoop is a whopping eight hundred dollars here, so I won't be doing that one because I don't particularly like them anyways. I might get a ten by ten hoop from Dime because you know, yeah. For sure. Leah says you always do a good job when you're on. Thank you. It's nerve wracking. Um, but I think it's the coolest thing ever to talk to Eileen Roche. We have a little chat before we go on and she tells me what she's going to be throwing at me and I go, yes. And then there we go. That's it. It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. So as soon as I can get the upgrade for Captain Jack, I've seen some things about it. And the long satin stitch designs look really cool. I like really cool. The machine, you'll have to get used to the noise because it's a different, it's a different noise because they're making such long stitches, but it looks exactly like, kind of like a spirograph, but also nail art. So when people put down nails and then they string string so string art it's awesome anyone else have a cat sleeping on their keyboard nope not me not me all right so the pink looks really nice with the purple it's a bit bright but maybe it's okay now I have this really really deep purple for the dragonfly body and I think this is gonna look great so I'm just changing out the threads it's uh, darker than this than the organza the four layers or three layers of organza looks really good. so let's check this out so we're doing the body and then we have to do the inside of the body I think um, I think the body's beautiful. So it's hard to see. You'll see it in a minute, the color. Um, I like it. Do you see the color up there? So it's a dark purple. Now you can see it. A little bit more red in it than the purple of the organza. It almost looks like burgundy, but it's purple. Exquisite has the most exquisite thread colors. Yeah, I like it. I could have done like a, a pink. So many options. They have uh, different body styles on the different, different dragonflies. The yeah. one I did yesterday had a nice program of satin. Nice. Really cool. Yeah, Don was just saying that they have nice um, styles, body styles for each of the dragonflies, meaning they're all different. Judy Quilt, prefer a dog on my lap rather than a cat. 
I know, my weenie is always sitting on my lap. And by weenie, I mean weenie dog. I love Floriani thread. I really need to try Dime's exquisite thread to compare. Um, to me, they're equal. I happen to inherit a ton of Floriani. So that's what I've been using because that's what I had. And frankly, as you can imagine, thread in Canada is really pricey. Um, so I just used what I had and I enjoyed it for sure, even though the thread was a little bit older. But now that I have the exquisite, that's all I use. So awesome. Isabel, yay! Chris Yost says, my cat never, never sleeps on my keyboard. Well, I can say with full confidence that neither do my dogs. My hounds are too big and the weenie sits downstairs with Don most of the time. He likes the sound of the embroidery machines because when he was a baby, I used to sit with them, you know, on my lap while I was working or underneath the desk. So, yeah. Thanks for the exquisite thread info, Sue. Yeah, if I had to pick now, I always choose for whatever reason the exquisite thread, but I'd say they're equal. Um, and they also, the exquisite thread runs perfectly on my 10 needle, which we found <laughs> in the years of doing all this, they, they don't like just any thread on the 10 needles. So I was happy about that for sure. Um, Barbara, welcome. We'll watch the full later. Well, we had a, a lovely quilt chat, which is nice. Um, kind of got up to date on everything. The exquisite thread is wonderful to use. The colors are beautiful too. Give them a try. You won't be sorry. Um, one of my favorite things about the exquisite thread is some of the variegated thread. And by that, I mean the packs that you get. And it's the three colors of thread that are used to make the variegated thread. And they comes in packs and they have names. So you get four spools of thread and they all go. And I've used it a couple times on different projects. And it is a stunning effect because it all matches perfectly. You could use it on one like this, too. Um, Don and I tried to figure it out for the longest time. Um, the variegated on one thing and it was driving us nuts. Okay, so a quick thread change. So, by the way, it is ES348, so exquisite. 348 is the color I just used, that deep, deep, deep color. And I'm going to put 305 on, which is a pale pink that you guys are going to see in a minute for sure. I wanted something lighter. This is for just kind of like the highlights of the dragonfly. So highlights are usually done in a lighter color so it's just it's just a pale pink and if you guys want me to call out the the exquisite colors that i'm using um just let me know i would normally put something like that in the description of the video but i kind of do things on the fly so it would be a waste of time oh he's got eyes he's got pink eyes well that's okay that's okay. I like that. Oh, he's so cute. The detail. This block is gorgeous. I, I'm going to see. I think I really do like it, but I'm still partial to the red and green. Maybe because it's Christmas colors. That could possibly be. I don't know. I like the pinks and the bling because it's just running stitches. It's not over um, blinged. 
Haha, <laughs> it's got pink eye. Thanks, Misha. Thanks. I stitched out a sick dragonfly. Thanks. <laughs> Christmas colors. Were you thinking that, Judy Quilt? Maybe that's why it catches my um, effect, uh, my eye sort of thing. I love the shiny effect of Floriani, but it threads in my machine. Um, you know, the machines are picky. I wouldn't buy, like, all of the colors, although can you imagine that? Buying every single color of a collection? Yeah, mm-hmm, I could live with that. But buy a couple of spools of it. Um, we learned the hard way with our production that it, our, our machines, the commercial machine, would only like Madeira, thank you. Very particular about it. He would not run anything else. So all the machines had to have Madeira because they all had to match. Odie, Odie's squeaking. Okay, now we are going to do the folded fabric. Oh, I'm glad I picked pink for the inside. Isn't that cute? I love it. I like it. I like so it. you can see the bling isn't too blingy. It's not an overuse of bling. I'm happy with that. I wish the camera would pick that up. It's really cool. Yeah, it's kind of, you got to get the right angle. So we are putting folded fabric edges on. Now I've done this one in opposite colors. This is going to be my middle piece of my triptych here. Um, and I think it's going to be good. So folded fabric, we're folding it this way. So make sure you have it lined up the right way. And there we go. And it's going to stitch a line. And then guess what we do with it? What do you think we do with it? Fold it over. Yeah. So face down in the opposite direction of where you want it to be. Did ya? I've done it. I've done it. One stitch and I was able to just flip the fabric around without removing it. Sometimes if you have funny shapes, you think it's going to be good. Like you hold it over and you think, yeah. And then you actually do it. And there's like a corner missing. Ooh, nice contrast. I kind of like that. Ooh, I like that. Yep. Very nice. I think that's going to look good. Uh, I like having the sashing, the thin sashing right in the block like built in so you don't have to sew it and I think when all these go together it's gonna make kind of like a different little pattern so we do top bottom side to side the top and bottom ones you have to trim a little bit because they get caught up and we want them to look beautiful so folded fabric sashing gorgeous so placement, so I know where everything's going. And if you get mixed up which way to do it, it's all the fabric is always going to be face down. So if I do it like this and fold it over, that's going to fit. If I did it this way and fold it over, that's not going to work. So yeah, you can just play around with it a little bit if you're... If you get mixed up, sometimes, you know, it's pretty darn easy to get a little confused with it. But face down in the opposite direction is what you're going for. So it's going to stitch the line. That's how you always know that it is folded fabric because there's a line, just a plain line. And then you know that's what it is. A beautiful, beautiful. So now we're going to fold our folded fabric and crease it. You could iron it, I guess, if you want. So I was trying to make a guess at what dime is coming out with new. I was wondering if it was going to be a hoop. But I don't know. Maybe. I bet you it's something cool. Dime comes out with the best stuff. If anyone has any guesses, let me know. 
Okay, so now before we start the side ones, what we want to do, and I'm going to do it right at the desk here, is we want to cut these pieces off. Now you don't have to be perfect about it, but they do get caught up if you don't. Ask me how I know. How do you think I know? I've done it and made a mess of everything. So I got to pull this out just a little bit. I'll still keep it on camera. I don't usually trim at my machine, um, but these ones don't really matter too much. So it is okay to do it this way. And Judy Quilt, I'll make sure all my biddly bits get out of the way. So that's what it should look like before you start the side ones. It almost makes a beautiful frame. So here we go on this one. We're almost done. Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the dark and light, same fabric, different order. I'm hoping it looks really good when I put them together. So the fabric is folding that way. So we want it to lay it in the opposite direction and make sure you have enough and i have more than enough so i can even do that if i wanted so if you need to double check double check but we should be good to go on this one folded fabric is nice and fast to do too i like it and it looks like it's hand sewn i like it beautiful and after this one, we just have one more to do. And I like it. It's changing, to me, it's changing how it looks. It's awesome. Look at that. I like the dark border. Yes, yes. A whole different look to it, doesn't it? Yeah. So the dark border kind of draws your eye to the actual design. I'm thinking maybe solid colors, like I said, black. I, I wouldn't normally use black as a background for anything. It's kind of dark and hopeless seeming. Um, but I think it would look great. They used a lot of white in the Anita Good Design samples. But I like to do things differently. So, placement. Do you think this pink is too bright? What do you guys think? Is it too bright? The pink of the dragonfly? I think it adds to it. Yeah. I was going to do white, but I noticed I had already done white in the flowers, and I don't think it would look good. It's always fun. You could always do the satin stitches in, if you didn't use it for all of this, in the King Star Metallic. <coughs> so I, I didn't tell you this, Dawn, I have a pack of the King Star Metallic in the fall colors. So there's a purple, there's an orange, there's a couple of them. And I want to design something specifically to use those metallic threads. Yeah, something interesting. I haven't come up with anything, but it's sitting at, <laughs> sitting at my desk. So, okay, last one. Um, I can't wait to see how this is going to look with the other ones beside it. And uh, afterwards, I'm going to sew them all together. Beautiful. Like I said, you can iron these down if you want. Um, most of the time, it works out just perfectly the way I'm doing it. It's wonderful. There we go. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Nice folded fabric corners there. Yeah, that changes everything, doesn't it? Look at that. We're done. I mean, we didn't do half the stitching, but that's okay. Happy music! I love it. All right, Don, back to the desk, and it's showtime. It's showtime? No, go time? Nope, showtime. I'm just going to pop it out of the hoop just so we can take a look at it. Yes, I really do like the dark outside. So this was my idea of how it's kind of going to look. 
is see that what do you think don yeah i like that the light and dark and then it kind of matches so oh yeah i like that isn't that neat let's see if i can get it held there yeah you know what that makes it look really good if you're doing three you can you know play around with your fabric if you want i like it so i just traded the sashing fabric for the background fabric so it's opposite but the same so i like this i like the purple that is a stunning color you guys can't really see the bling but isn't that magical i would like a whole um you know wall hanging i guess using the green and the red and the red and the white for the dragonflies i think that would look amazing so yeah just i'm, I'm just gonna make a small wall hanging out of that i'm gonna sew it together right sides together and put a backing on it and put it up on the wall because it's stunning yeah you guys can get all three in there oh that's wonderful so orange and blue colors purple and pinks and red and greens and beautiful background and sashing fabric i love it so they do take a while to stitch but as you can see ooh, leah says put some crystals on it Ooh, I'm I'm thinking crystals could go the tips. All right, I'll do that too. <laughs> it's a fantastic idea, brilliant idea. I love it. Um, I'm also going to stitch out one of the big ones and I will show you guys a picture of it finished. So yeah, get stitching. This is a lot of fun. Play with your colors, play with different threads using a little bit of metallic here and there don't overdo your metallic you could however do the dragonfly with the outside in metallic i think it would go well with the organza and be fantastic so yeah dragonfly garden blocks there's a whole bunch of them um oh yeah lynn says i won bobbin chicken woo Woohoo! I did. Thanks for reminding me. Awesome. So it's a great technique. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget, Wednesday, we're going to be starting the Sweet Pea Sew Along. And uh, it's going to be a weekly thing. So every Wednesday for 12 weeks. And we are going to be stitching out their blocks that are Halloween blocks that are coming out. So thanks everyone for watching. I hope you guys like this video. Please remember to like this video and go and stitch out your dragonfly garden. Thanks, Anita. Good design. It's awesome. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye, everyone. Oh, man, I love it.